This video goes with section 69 of Hansen and Quinn's Greek, an intensive course, and it covers the attributive use of the participle. That section is in Hansen and Quinn on pages 213 to 214. Now that you know how to form and recognize participles, I want to start talking with you about how to read and understand them. One of the three ways that Greek uses participles is the attributive use of the participle, which, as its name suggests, is when the participle is in attributive position. Remember that these are verbal adjectives. And like adjectives, they can be in attributive position. They must agree in case, number, and gender. And like verbs, they can govern objects or do any of the other things that any particular verb can do. And as you start using them, you'll realize that whatever the verbal adjective, the participle agrees with, acts pretty much as its subject. That is, it does active or middle participles, and it is done by passive participles. So you can think of whatever of a participle agrees with as the subject of that participle. So this is easier to understand if we start looking at examples. He arhusa helene pethe, ruling Helen persuades. That's an active participle, so you can think of Helen as the person doing the ruling. She is the subject, so to speak, of that participle. That's not a good grammatical term there. That's not good jargon, really, but it is a way of understanding the relationship of the verbal action to whatever the noun is that the participle agrees with. Hothuon poietes esothe. Here we have another active participle. It agrees with poet. It agrees with poietes. So we can think of the poet doing the sacrificing, and we could translate the sacrificing poet was saved. In these instances, these participles are in attributive position, as you can see. And so they are directly modifying, directly limiting the nouns that they are in attributive position to. They're giving us more information about those nouns. And they agree in case, number, and gender. Feminine nominative singular, usa, with Helene, and um, masculine nominative singular, through own, with poietes. There they're behaving very much like adjectives. And then their verbal aspect, of course, they can still have objects. So for instance, hodzoa thuon poietes esothe. The poet has thuon in attributive position. It's an attributive participle. And thuon there agrees in the case number and gender with poietes. But it also has a direct object because it's a verb form as well. And it can have objects and it has a direct object, zoa. And so we have the poet sacrificing animals was saved. There are many different ways to translate the participle in attributive position. The sacrificing poet was saved, keeps the structure of the Greek pretty much intact. The poet who was sacrificing was saved. There in English, we're expressing the participle as an English relative clause, and that carries the same meaning. It doesn't represent the structure of the Greek in the same way, but sometimes that will be better in English context and English idiom. Of course, a participle doesn't have to be in nominative case. Tois thusasi poietais epesametha. We obeyed the sacrificing poets. That keeps the Greek structure pretty much intact. It has an English participle in the same spot as the Greek participle between the article in English and the noun in English. We obeyed the poets having sacrificed. That puts the modifying participle after the English noun, and we do that very often, and it conveys really clearly the relative timing of the two verbs. So we have an aorist main verb here, we obeyed, and saying we obeyed the poets having sacrificed makes it clear that the sacrificing happened before the obeying, that sense of relative time that participles need sometimes. And English is more clumsy about that than Greek is, and this is one of the ways to get that across. We can also expand into a whole relative clause. 
we obeyed the poets who sacrificed gives the sense of the timing and also makes it even clearer who's doing what. Let me give you another example. He halane esosa ton pefulagmenon aiga. So here we have a passive participle. Helen saved the having been guarded goat. Now that does the default translation. That keeps the English construction very much the way the Greek construction looks. The default translation for the participle in the perfect passive in the same position uh, with the noun as in the Greek, but it's pretty awkward English. So after you do that default translation, you really might want to change to better English idiom. She saved the goat who had been guarded. And there you hear clearly the relative time as well. It makes it quite clear that Pefulagmenon is completed before the saving. So that gives you a sense of some of the varieties of translations that you can do with the attributive participle. Context is always going to help you and your sense of good English idiom is always going to help you. I want to talk about a very common way that Greek uses participles. We said repeatedly that they are verbal adjectives and remember that adjectives can be used as substantives. That is, can stand in for people and things. So let's go back to the examples that we had at the beginning. He arachusa helene peithe and hothuon poietes esothe, ruling Helen persuades and the sacrificing poet was saved. But you can still have a person persuading and a person being saved without specific nouns, with just the article and a participle. So he arachusa peithe with an article and its magic to turn anything into a person or a thing. Here we have a feminine nominative singular article and a feminine verbal adjective, a feminine nominative singular participle to go with it. And what that means is the ruling woman persuades. And by the same token, hothuon is the sacrificing man. So hothuon asothe, the sacrificing man was saved. Greek can turn any verb into a person or thing doing that verb. Other ways to translate it, the woman who rules persuades, the ruler persuades, the man who sacrifices was saved, the sacrificer was saved. Greek is going to use participles all over the place to make people who are doing things or who are having things done to them. And of course, you can have substantive uses of the participle, not just in the nominative case. So, he arachusa ton thuanta pethe, the ruling woman persuades the sacrificer. There you have a guy sacrificing, a man sacrificing in the masculine accusative singular. And they don't just have to be active. He arachusa ton sothenta pethe, the ruling woman persuades the saved man. Look for those all over the place, the substantives. And let me let you in on another detail about the substantive use of the participle when it's in attributive position. He arhusa tus thuantas pethe means the ruling woman persuades the sacrificers. But we don't know in English, without context, whether we're talking about the sacrificers, the ones we've been talking about, or those ones over there, specific ones, or whether we're talking about the ruling woman persuading sacrificers in general. That's what she does. She persuades sacrificers. And English is not clear about the difference in that, and neither is Greek, unless it happens to be negative. Then, in the negative, if the object here were tus u thuantas, it would have to be the men not sacrificing the specific ones, those men we've been talking about, or the men who are over there doing that sacrificing, that's the specific use. With u, you know it has to be the specific meaning. If it's got a me, tus me thuantas, it's still men not sacrificing, but it's generic. It could be the whole category, the whole class of men who don't sacrifice. 
in the positive without an ooh or a may, you can't tell the difference. You have to know from context which one you're looking at. But you get a nice bonus with the negative. It's going to tell you which one it is. So with an ooh, it would mean the men not sacrificing or perhaps the men who aren't sacrificing. And with the may, it would be the class, men not sacrificing or those who don't sacrifice. And that's a pretty brief introduction to the attributive use of the participle. You'll see it in many more forms and contexts, and you'll get lots of practice on how to use it as you read it in Hanson and Quinn and in Real Greek.